I am a grateful believer and follower of Jesus Christ who has been set free from the bondage of fear, self-hatred, anger, prideful self-righteousness, and I struggle with control, procrastination, overspending, food issues, and codependency, and my name is Barbara. Hi. Second Corinthians 12.9 states, and my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. My life has been an example of weakness, some from the sins done to me, and exceedingly more as I turned away from God and chose to put myself and others first in place of him. This is my story. First, I will share some details from events in my childhood. Then I will describe some of the chaos that occurred when I tried to do life my own way. And finally, I will share how God is transforming my life as I surrendered it to him and turn my life and will over to him daily. I was born in the early 50s to very young parents, and I was the second child and the first girl. Uh, my uncle said that I looked like a drowned rat. <laughs> my grandmother thought that they had brought home the wrong baby. Since my skin was yellow from being jaundice, my eyes were slanted shut, and I had an inch of straight black hair sticking straight up. Uh, but I guess I grew on them because they decided to, to keep me and called me their China, little China doll. I was quiet and a happy baby, not quite as vocal or active as my bigger 18-month-old brother. My dad worked very hard and long hours, six days a week, and we stayed home with my mom. She was disabled and did not drive. She had been born with a deformity that did not allow her to eat solid food. I just remember her always being very thin and frail, she would lay on the couch and watch us play. My brother was always told that he was in charge of taking care of the three of us when my dad was gone. Of course, he was too young to even care for himself, much less a mother and a baby. He was always in trouble, it seemed. I remember just trying to remain invisible so I wouldn't get punished. The one day of the week that we did get to leave the house was Sunday. We would get all dressed up and go to church. I loved Sunday school and singing Jesus Loves Me and learning that Jesus loved all the little children. In those early days, I idolized my dad, loved my sweet mother, and my brother was my best friend and hero. As young as five years of age, I believed and knew that God created the world and I believed in Jesus as my savior. On the outside, we looked like the perfect Christian family, but dark secrets began to emerge and would change my life forever. Before the age of seven, I began to be sexually abused by my father. It continued, con would continue for almost five years. During that time, I was raped six nights a week from 5 a.m. to 6 a.m. I would be threatened that if I would say anything to anyone, my mother and brother would be killed. So I did not say anything to anyone for over 30 years. Because of this darkness and the pain that it caused me, I wanted to die for most of my life, especially those early years of my childhood. I had a deep desire to be in heaven with Jesus. I begged God to take me to heaven. When that did not happen, I started to blame myself. In my childish way of thinking, I thought this must be happening because I was bad, or that I must be doing something to make it happen to me. I thought maybe my long hair was too pretty, or maybe I wasn't being good enough, so I tried to be perfect to keep it from happening, but it still kept happening. I had to block out those years and what happened to me in order to function and just survive. I had to put them away in a closet and lock the door and throw away the key. Suddenly, just before my 12th birthday, the abuse stopped. We moved and we joined another church and start, I started to go to youth group. 
The next four years became almost normal for me and the dark secret was tucked away safely in the closet. But then my mom got really sick. It was cancer. The night that my mom went into the hospital, we were sure, we weren't sure whether she would live or die. Everyone was crying. It was bedtime and my dad started to comfort me. It felt good to be held. But then he started making sexual advances towards me. It was different this time. He was gentle and my body started responding to his advances. I was scared and confused and didn't know what to do. My father became furious and blamed me. He began to call me names and hit me and told me if I ever let my body do that again, that I would go to hell. The next day was my first suicide attempt. I was 16 years old. I told him that if he ever tried doing that to me again, I would kill myself and leave a note to the church telling everyone why I had done it. And the abuse stopped. My mother survived the cancer and things went on. But inside, I was even more broken. I felt completely ruined and dirty. I wanted to save that special first lovemaking experience for my husband. But now, my perception of my body image had changed, and I felt different. I started dressing uh, to attract boys. I felt conflicted inside, since I knew it was wrong to make out and tease boys and then stop and say, no, I'm a good girl. I would feel guilty for my behavior. I found my dad's Playboy magazines under his bed and started looking at them. A cycle of binge eating, porn, depression, starving, shopping, cutting, and petting started. I was living a double life of wanting to be a good girl on one hand and experience the shame and guilt for my sin on the other. I pretended to be what I wanted to be, a good Christian girl, but I was becoming more of a self-destructive tease. I had a burning desire to find someone to save me, to rescue me, and to take me away. Perfect romantic love became my dream, a fantasy. I fell in love with a boy who worked for my grandmother. When he rejected me, I was crushed. Shortly after that, my best friend at church died. She was only 18. I decided that God did not care about me or anyone else to allow all of this to happen and that I could run my own life a lot better than he could. I began to do my, things my own way. When I made the decision to take charge of my own life, instead of allowing God to do his job, I hurt myself and those I love even more. At the age of 20, I married the first man that asked me. I was not in love with him, but he said he was a Christian and he wanted children. I figured that was a good start. We had a beautiful wedding and I started and we started our life together. There was just one problem. We didn't do things God's way. We both wanted things our own way. We both had been abused by our fathers in different ways. We both had been uh, pampered by uh, the women in our lives. Our first years were full of fighting, tears, and abuse. But I thought I knew exactly what would, ha would help, a baby. We had a beautiful baby boy, followed by another baby boy four years later. We did not change, and as I focused my love and attention on my children, they became the idols of my heart. I spent every waking moment trying to be a good mother and fill the role of a good wife, but my patterns of depression, overspending, cutting, and destructive eating returned. My husband was very critical and verbally abusive. He became distant. We were both very immature and selfish. We did seek counseling but after 16 years of verbal and emotional abuse and the det detrimental effects that it had on myself and my children, I filed for divorce and got custody. I thought I knew just what to do. I needed to find another earthly savior. I was at an all-time low. I could neither eat or sleep, and I had gotten down to 88 pounds. 
I had decided to go to Disneyland with my brother's best friend. His wife had divorced him the year before, and he was an AA, and I had been going to Dakota and Al-Anon for about three years. We talked recovery all day, and I thought I had found my savior. We dated, fell in love, and married the next year. That same year, I gave birth to my wonderful third son. Three years later, we fostered and adopted our precious daughter to complete our family. We decided to take a family vacation to see my older brother and his family. My older brother shared with me for the first time about his own sexual abuse as a child. We decided to go together and confront my parents about what had happened and ask them to seek professional help. They denied what they had done and they rejected both of us and we became outcasts. All the feelings and the pain and the abandonment from my childhood started to return. All the memories I had repressed for over 30 years came flooding back. Memories of the sexual abuse overtook my thoughts and I became severely depressed again. My brother suffered from the same results. Nightmares, flashbacks, and panic attacks became commonplace. I continued in counseling and was taking multiple medications. My suicidal thoughts returned, as well as the self-harm of cutting and toxic eating. I became consumed that my family should still look perfect. This caused me to overspend, which led to more stress on my husband and family. I was trying to control everything even our parents, because I felt out of control in reality. I had been teaching Christian preschool and children for decades that Jesus loved them, but I felt like he could never love me because I was not ever going to be perfect, not ever going to be good enough, no matter how hard I tried. Finally, the stress took its toll and at 46 years of age, with a loving husband and two very small children, age six and four, I was diagnosed with an incurable muscle disease called myothenia gravis, which is a chronic neuromuscular autoimmune disorder that causes weakness involving over 300 voluntary muscles of the body. Myothenia gravis means grave muscle weakness. It is a progressive disease and some people die as a result. In five months, I were, went from directing a Christian preschool to losing the use of my limbs and becoming dependent upon a wheelchair and bedridden. My whole identity was based on being a wife and mother, and I felt useless and helpless, like when I was a child. I was put on strong pain medication to stop the spasms, and my life was a blur between screaming and pain and sleeping. Our lives revolved around my care, but work and school had to keep going for my husband and our children. I was drugged most of the time. My brother and his wife put me on a prayer chain that went out over the Midwest. The doctors performed an operation that they thought might help, but they couldn't promise anything. Thankfully, the pain became more bearable afterwards, and we just started taking one day at a time Another operation would be performed to um, help me be able to see because the muscles in my eyes were bagging so much that I couldn't see to walk. Somehow we survived and the kids grew up knowing how to help someone in and out of a wheelchair and how to make themselves lunch and do their own laundry eventually. My disease was the hardest on my husband. He was in management now at his job and had a lot of responsibility, both there and at home. He started traveling a lot and it affected our family. I was still very ill and it was hard on me, but especially hard on the kids. They had lost a mom, but now their dad was gone too. We all suffered, but we continued to take life one day at a time. We were not involved in a church or community of believers, so we did not have that support system. 
Five years later, and still in a wheelchair, I got a call that my brother had overdosed. The death of my dear brother was unbearable to me. I lashed out at my parents and blamed them. I called, called them murderers for how they had hurt him. My brother and my husband had also been very close, and my brother's death affected him as well. After my brother's death, I took a turn for the even dark, I took a turn into an even darker place. My husband and I had always relied on one another for strength and comfort, but he was seldom home anymore, and I was still housebound most of the time. I became even more severely depressed because my marriage was falling apart, and my husband told me that he wanted out. During this time, I tried to commit suicide multiple times and was hospitalized repeatedly. I was diagnosed with PTSD before and severe clinical depression, but now I was diagnosed with a mental illness called borderline personality disorder. My family and I were not only dealing with my physical illness, but my diagnosis with this new mental illness as well. As our marriage fell apart and our fights got worse, there were times when I lashed out and verbally abused my husband. Yes, I was taking a lot of medication, but I felt rage and anger and I directed it towards him. I wanted to hurt him back for wanting out and giving up on me and hurting me. I recognized that I was just trying to control anything and anyone I could, since I had no real control over anything. The suppressed anchor towards my father and all that he had done had been held inside for so long. I started releasing that anger against my husband, the one that had loved me the most through all my pain and sickness and chaos. I really had loved him too, but things were so out of control. One time I became physically abusive to him and even to my children when I was on the medication. I am beyond horrified that I behaved this way. I have now been, I have not been on any habit forming tranquilizers or pain medications for three years and it has been five years since I have tried to hurt myself or others or have been hospitalized for any reason. I wish that I could tell you that it all got better, and that was the end of the story, but it is not. On October 6, 2013, my husband lost all hope and attempted suicide. He died later that day from gunshot wounds from the sheriff's department having to shoot him because he would not put down his weapon. It was the worst day of my life. He had been my friend for 25 years and really was the love of my life through good times and many bad times. My life and the life of my children were shattered that day and I was completely broken. I was at a loss as to what to do. We had visited Real Life Church and my daughter had started attending Celebrate Recovery. She said, Mom, you need to come. So I went with her on Friday night. The first six weeks, I couldn't talk without crying and I always sat as far back as I could get. But then something amazing happened. This big guy, who was the pastor, looked straight at me and said, do you want to get well? It was as if God was talking straight to me. Later that night, I woke up 
and got down on my knees in my kitchen and cried out to God for help. Psalms 34, 18 says, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are, are crushed in spirit. At that moment, I knew God reached down and took my hand and he has not left my side. <laughs> Isaiah 41.10 says, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed. I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. As I look at encounters of anchors of hope, I see how God worked in my life. Anchor one, make the decision to get well from my problems and admit that I do a terrible job at playing God. When Pastor Bill looked at me and said, do you want to get well? I made a decision that I did want to get well. I asked God to forgive me of all my sins. I knew I was a hopeless sinner in desperate need of my Savior, Jesus Christ. Anchor three says, respond to the love of God by surrendering my life and will to Jesus Christ. Much to my surprise, I realized that God still wanted me and loved me. He forgave me all my sins against him and others. The most amazing part is that he is teaching me how to help others by telling them my story and the good news of salvation through Jesus Christ. I am still very much a work in progress, but he is showing me in his word how to deny myself, pick up my cross, and follow him daily. Anchor 12, live out and share the hope I have. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your path straight. As a result of deciding to get well and surrender my will to the Lord Jesus Christ, I was baptized by Pastor Bill Reeser on February 1st, 2014 and received the Holy Spirit to live within me. I was 62 years old. When the Encounter Ministry was formed earlier this year, it was only natural that I would become a part of it. I have learned so much and I wanted to learn more about how to continue to get well and become discipled in God's word and apply it to my life and community with others. That had been missing in our marriage. I had learned under Pastor Bill's teaching the difference between the things God says he will do and knowing what responsibilities are mine. Through the forgiveness night and by doing an inventory, I was able to forgive my parents and tell them that I loved them before they died. Also in this series, the pastor Bill taught on the Holy Spirit. I learned about my new identity in Christ and about my best friend on earth, the Holy Spirit, that helps me daily to win battles. I now know that I have to put on God's armor to fight the war against Satan. I have learned how to do that each day. Through the prayer series, I also learned about my most powerful weapon, which is prayer, or, or my communication with the most powerful being in the universe, my Heavenly Father. I learned that I have to take my thoughts captive to the obedience of Christ I have to stop and allow God to take my thoughts and control them instead of letting them control me. I have to remember the truth of what God's word says instead of just relying on my own thoughts. I surrender daily so I may be able to speak and act more like Jesus Christ every day. I have learned that encounter is so much more than just a recovery program. It is encounter with Jesus Christ and his love and healing power. He is the savior of my soul and my anchor. I was once sad, but now I have joy. I was once proud, but now I'm humble. I was once blind, but now I see. I was once sick, 
but now I'm well. I was once lame, but now I walk. I was once an orphan, but now I'm a do- the daughter of the one true king. I will sit next to my brother, Jesus, the Savior. Thank you, Jesus, and thank you for letting me share my story.